Skyhawk Sports Network here with head football coach Brandon Crosby following his team's 21-13 loss to number 13th ranked CSU Pueblo. Uh, coach, uh, heck of a battle against a nationally ranked opponent. Just your initial thoughts on that ball game? Um, you know, we played well. I uh, talked to these guys at the beginning of the, uh, the game in the locker room uh, and just tried to really let them know that as long as we stay together um, and we're loyal to each other and understand that we are a team and a family and we're all who we got. So um, I'm really, really proud of them um, in fighting and doing the things that they could do today on the field with uh, the resources that we had. We had three receivers go down in the first half and I had four receivers in the second half all out of position um, and running concepts that they haven't ran all week. And we were able to function a little bit uh, in the pass game. You know, we continue to struggle in the, the rush game. Uh, these three down fronts are giving us fits um, in the movement. So uh, we just got to find a way to push the line of scrimmage and some, be a little more creative. But uh, I'm very proud of them. And like you said, um, like you said, in a tight ball game like this, you know, CSU Plobo runs for 158 yards on 40 carries. We're net positive 12 yards on 22 carries. Just how much did that change the game, kind of making the offense one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, I think we've been pretty one-dimensional or no-dimensional the uh, last couple weeks uh, with injuries. and um, So we were just trying to manufacture some stuff. We came up with some big plays in the past game. Uh, again, we had some guys in, in new positions, so we weren't necessarily being in the right spot all the time. Uh, you know, our defense is so good, and uh, Coach Rip does a, a heck of a job making sure that uh, they've got a sound game plan. And uh, everybody knows that game could have gone a lot worse uh, based off what we put on the field. So I'm just I'm, I'm stoked for the players. They understand that they put a, a decent product on the field, and there's room to grow. And moving into this last game to leave our seniors, uh, you know, with some momentum, understanding that we can compete. Uh, and not look, look dysfunctional with all the injuries, uh, I think we'll be all right. Tight ends played really well for you. Um, Zach Russell leads the team with seven catches, 47 yards, and a touchdown. And, and Sam Kohlberg, kind of more of a passing tight end, yep. he had, or, or blocking, blocking tight end, yeah. I should say, he had three catches, 86 yards, and set up that, that touchdown that made it interesting at the end. Just what you saw from those two guys and, and, and the, your tight ends. Yeah, those, those our tight ends make our offense go. We can run the ball. They really make our offense go because then people start have to come down and play man coverage, um, and we can you know work, work some stuff down the field. But they ended up just playing zone and playing some base defense, and you know they were able to stop the run with some five man boxes and six man boxes. So we had to resort to uh, some pass game and roll out, and we come up with some big plays. Uh, Colbrook uh, just kept on shedding tacklers and, and protected the ball. I think it was a third and ten on that catch that set up that touchdown and gave us a chance of just how big of a play was that and what you saw for the, the effort and from, from Colbrook on that play. Yeah, I think it was uh, third and one, actually. Um, but uh, the play wasn't there, and Colbrook actually adjusted to it. And, uh, you know, you worry when people are running and they're shedding tacklers that someone's going to come and block or take the ball out and fumble. So I was more hoping he would just go down and take the yards that we got, but nothing bad happened. Um, and he's he's a heck of a kid. He, you know, he's been the starter, he's been the backup. He just shows up to work and does what he's supposed to do, and he does a good job for us. That touchdown in the first half from uh, Boykin burns him for 50 yards, gets over the top. Yep. Um, you had mentioned in some previous weeks of taking shots down field and. They weren't connecting, finally able to right. connect right there. And how, how big of a touchdown was that to, to punch back to at CSU Pueblo and make it a 7-7 game and, and make it a ball game at that point? Yeah, those that is just more of an emotional high for everybody. To be like, oh, God, we can actually hit an open receiver and catch the ball and run. And, uh, we call him slim, but Marquez Boykin has elite speed, and he's going to get behind people uh, over and over again. So uh, it was good to see him, you know, and then he got banged up. So then we had to move him around. And Shaler got banged up and we had to move him around. So, um, you know, we did some good things. And, it, you know, we should expect to do this on, on a weekly basis. And we're just trying to figure out how to do it every week. I think uh, I thought the game really changed. I think it was a first and five. And Orndorff had a pass that might have touched the ground. But the officials ruled it an interception. So yep. And you guys were driving at the point. It goes from a chance to tie versus CSU Plubo goes and scores a touchdown that very next drive. Just yeah. that, that swing right there and what you saw. Yeah, I mean, I'll take the bullet on that one for sure. Um, you know, we because of the struggles we've had offensively, we, we're, we're often looking to take a shot. Um, and I figured it was first and five because of the penalty. 
and I was hoping maybe we could just maybe steal an easy one. And you know, they dropped into coverage, and you know, I could tell the quarterback to just you know, you see coverage, just throw it deep and maybe give him a shot. Um, but it was just an unfortunate play. I don't think he caught it, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you touched a little bit on your defense to hold a powerful 13th ranked CSU Plovo team to 21 points. Yep. Just oh. I mean, they gave up some yardage, but it was a lot of bend and not break today. What you saw from your defense? Yeah, they just fought. They fight every week. Um, you know, they're they're a very very tough group of individuals. And uh, like I said before, those Helms twins are flying around and they are not afraid to hit somebody. And so, um, you know, when you have a defense as solid as we do, and uh, if we ever, you know, if we get the offense going, we should have a good showing uh, this last game against South Dakota Mines, and that's just kind of what we're leaning towards. Last possession, you get the ball back of a chance to make a down eight chance to yep. try and drive it and and equalize things. Just kind of were you trying to get some short yeah. catches to get some momentum going? No, and, the first play I call a sprint out to the boundary. Uh, and they run a call four reads, so the corner bites on the first out. And we've been having the corner out open all day. And we just, you know, Warren Duff sped it up and didn't wait for him to get open earlier on. I told him, hey, it's going to be open, and he was, but he, he dumped it off early, and we, you know, we got like a yard or maybe even a negative yard. Uh, and then the next three plays, I've got two guys in positions they've never played uh, and routes that they haven't ran all week. So, um, you know, Hughes stops on one, uh, Russell falls on one, and, you know, you like to think that, you know, we're good enough to manage a drive and, and go score. Uh, but I just, you know, I don't think we're ready at, at that moment with all the injuries and stuff like that. We, I, you know, the plays were there, but uh, you're dealing with a lot of variables and just trying to do the best you can. You know, I know in in college football there's not a lot of moral victories, but do you get, feel good after how that that road trip went? How you guys played today, and this is something you guys can build off moving forward? A hundred percent. The road, the three game road trip, absolutely. Uh, you know, cut our team down. We were emotionally. Um, a, a little bit in disarray, and this whole week I just spent most of my time telling them that we're a family, and um, you know we're loyal to each other, and we all work really hard for each other. Uh, regardless of what happens on the field, we can't hold that against um, each other. So uh, I'm very, you know, moral victory, whatever you want to call it. I'm very proud of our team. Uh, they know it too. You can see it in their eyes. Uh, it's a lot different than the losses we've taken, you know, before the last three. So. We get to enjoy a bye week before having South Dakota Mines here to end the regular season. And you know, just how you, you guys will spend these two weeks preparing for Mines and, and how important that last yeah the last game is. For it's this been team. A, it's been a long season, so we're gonna try to get healthy and get back in the weight room and fix some of the things and uh, just get ready to send these seniors out uh, the right way. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that we should be able to do that. Thanks, coach.